Hey guys, I'm going to make a little video of um, uh, charging system uh, troubleshooting on uh, air-cooled VWs, whether it be 6-volt or 12-volt uh, generator setup. Uh, last night I was coming back from a uh, cruise night in the dark and I had my lights on and the stereo and, and whatnot and I started to get a, a glowing uh, generator light and uh, telling me that I was having an issue and I was able to make it all the way home but then when I went to go restart it uh, there wasn't enough left to uh, start the bus up so uh, here we go we're gonna go on a little journey of what it takes to fix it and uh, if you're having the same issue hopefully it helps you out so we're gonna go fire it up See at an idle, I'm not really getting the light on, uh, but if I rev it up, you see that my uh, generator light starts to glow with the headlights on too. Let's see it. Pretty much the same thing. So, uh, having said that, we're going to go and do some uh, troubleshooting in the back by the motor and see what it takes to find out what the problem is or uh, what the fix would be for it. So when putting uh, these uh, video clips together, I uh, lost or missed uh, a clip of showing you what the actual voltage was in the failed state of uh, when it was undercharging. And so I'm just gonna tell you what it was. It was about uh, a 12.9 at an idle and uh, it would uh, only go up to about 13, 12.9 and uh, not jumping up to around the 13.7 where it should be on a good charging system. So I just wanted to add that in, uh, although I cannot show you on a meter because I don't have that, uh, that footage and this is already after the bus is all put back together. Okay, I uh, hooked the meter up to my battery just to kind of see what the level of my battery is. I did have it on a trickle charger last night and I recovered, you're at uh, roughly 12.6 volts. Should be anywhere between 12 and a half and 13 volts on a, a good used battery. Uh, if you're charging it up and you're seeing like 10, 10 volts, something like that, you have a dead cell and that can cause you a bunch of other problems too. But uh, that's good on this one and let me find my flashlight. On the generator itself, I marked them with a Sharpie just so you can guys can see them a little bit better. You have D plus and you have DF. D plus is basically um, going through the, uh, it's a switched circuit, but it basically it connects directly to your battery to charge your battery back up. And DF is your field. This is what the regulator um, uh, tells the generator what to do and what it does is it, the more to ground that it goes the more it tells the generator to put out so what we're going to do is disconnect the wire that's actually we're going to disconnect both of them and um, we're going to run a jumper from df to ground i'm probably just going to ground it right to the generator body and with the meter on uh the d plus side and then the other uh, other end of the meter grounded we're going to see what kind of output the generator has now it'll be a little loud when i'm running it so i'm going to tell you ahead of time what we're looking for we're looking to see roughly uh 35 volts at about 3000 rpm so you can be revving it up pretty good but you want to see that it gets up to around that 35 volt mark okay now what i've done is i've, I've removed the uh, two wires off the generator you can see them here just remember that the the larger of the two wires when you turn the key on it's going to have power so you want to make sure that that's out of the way not going to touch anything ground wise and um, if you do have an issue with it you could just put some tape around it so it won't be an issue then i took a jumper lead and i connected it to the df remember d plus is the output df is uh, what it's getting for a signal from the regulator telling the generator what to do and what we're looking for um, is going to be I gotta put the, the hot lead of the meter on the uh, output side of the generator make sure we get that out of the way and what we're gonna be looking for is uh, roughly uh, anything above 35 volts when you rev it up and uh, so we're gonna go fire it up right now and see that we get that and that's gonna be when I ground out the DF terminal right now it shouldn't do anything scale because we're looking to see about that much output. Alright, now the 
generator is, is grounded out on the, uh, the field side and at an idle it's putting out 23, 24 volts. So if you notice, I go all the way up to 84 volts and uh, that's telling me that generator has plenty of output to be able to do what it needs to do. Okay, I'm just going to recap on that a little bit just to, so it makes uh, perfect sense uh, to you. Is uh, The generator has two uh, terminals on it. Actually, it's three. There's a ground lug on the back, but we're not concerned with that. There is a, a D plus and a DF. D plus is your output of your generator. DF is what you're telling the generator to do, and the regulator uh, it gets a signal from the regulator. So what we just did was we tested the battery, made sure the battery had enough uh, output to it. And you want to be between 12 and a half and 13 volts roughly on a good battery. Uh, then after that we started it up and we made sure that the, uh, and we wanted to see what the uh, charging system was doing. If you started it up and it said below uh, what your battery voltage was when you started it, then you know you're not charging at all. In my case I have um, my charging system is just not keeping up with what is going on. So from there, I went and started testing the generator itself. I took both leads off the generator, they're right here. Again, remember that the, um, the larger of the two is your output and uh, you wanna watch that you do not touch anything uh, ground-wise with that when you turn the key on, because that will be live. Uh, I took a meter and the hot lead is on the D plus side. I wanna see what the generator is putting out. The uh, uh, negative side of the meter is just grounded out and uh, the other side of it there's a jumper wire on it on the DF the DF uh, what you're going to do is ground that out when it's running and again it's just going to the oh, mine on the post on the battery but you can ground it anywhere you have a good ground and then at an idle um, you know you, you definitely want to be a, uh, say over 20 volts or so and when you rev it up you want to be a minimum of 35 volts uh, on a good generator. So that's what we've done. We know that that's okay. Uh, now we're going to go look into some other things. Another thing to add is that uh, part of your charging system uh, components is the actual light itself. So if you turn your key on and, you, and your generator light does not turn on and your bulb is blown, your charging system will not work. Okay, so you ask yourself, so you didn't make 35 plus volts on your generator, and what do I do from that point? So there's a way to test the generator itself. It's testing the generator, and it's also setting the polarity. The polarity um, is, uh, I should say magnetism. You, you're, the generator needs to see a little bit of mag magnetic field for it to start generating power. And sometimes if it's been sitting for a long time or a battery was disconnected, it can lose that and it won't have any output when you first try to go and use it. A little side note to that is also um, that you wanna make sure that your brushes have good contact, especially if it's an older unit and it's been sitting a long time. And there's one on the top and on the bottom. That right there is your brushes. You can see there's a little spring-loaded tab and this piece right here uh, you can try pushing down on both of them. There's one on this side and 180 degrees is one on the bottom. You can push on both of those. Sometimes the armature is a little on the dirty side. But what you should see, this yellow wire again is grounded and uh, it just grounded to the body. And then this white wire right here is just connected to my 12 volts on my battery. So what I'm going to do is um, touch the D plus and put 12 volts to it. And again, the um, the DF is on the grounded side, and you should see the generator spin, which it does. You know, a generator is also an electric motor. Uh, don't hold it there, just do enough to do a test. If you hold it too long, you can burn up your generator. Uh, it's not meant to really run that way. It's just for the test. Okay, so after doing the test of uh, putting power to the generator with no belt on it to see if the generator would spin, you can reconnect your belt and reset up your meter to uh, check for uh, generator uh, output with uh, the two leads disconnected like we did before and to see now if you recovered your uh, 35 plus volts uh, over 3000 RPMs. It may, uh, by uh, resetting the polarity, it may come back for you. Okay, just to summarize uh, what I believe is going on with my VW is, I believe my generator's fine. I, it's putting out enough output and uh, I don't believe that to be my issue, but I believe my voltage regulator is not sending the signal to uh, DF 
and uh, telling it to um, increase output and uh, that as far as I understand there is two types of voltage regulators uh, this is the type 2 bus that we're working with and um, there's also type 1 which is beetle and a beetle voltage regulator will work in just a beetle a bus voltage regulator will work in a bus or beetle but a beetle one will not work in a bus why I'm not sure of that it's just what I heard and I believe I have a type 1 voltage regulator voltage regulator in here and uh, I will try taking one out of another bus that I have and see if it cures my problem okay so behind my garage is a, uh, a 70 Westie that's uh, waiting its turn to be restored and uh, what we're gonna do is uh, borrow the borrow the voltage regulator out of this and see if that cures our problem and hopefully that will be a type 2 uh, voltage regulator so it's a little tight back where the voltage regulator is mounted so while I have it out this is the one out of the 70 Westie that was out back the part number uh, indicates that it is a beetle one it's a uh, actually I'm not sure on that it's actually uh, it's starting 019. Usually on a beetle, it'll be uh, 11 is for, um, uh, sorry, 111 will be for beetle, 211 will be for bus. That's the designation of the part numbers. This one uh, doesn't correspond to either one. It's uh, 019, so uh, it's anybody's guess. But anyway, I, uh, I took a Sharpie and I marked the terminals so that you can read them a little bit better. You see you got the double terminals here. That's going to go right to your battery. This is the lead that goes to your battery. Um, through a, a thin cable it actually goes down to your starter in most cases and, and it jumps on there uh, this terminal 61 right here this is the terminal that goes to your little light in the dash that's why I said you have to have that working and then there's two more on the other side and they are the same as what is on the generator itself you have DF which is going to be the field and then the power that comes out of the generator goes to this terminal being D plus Okay, I have the uh, new voltage, new old voltage regulator from the uh, other VW bus uh, installed on this one. So we're going to go fire this one up. Let's see what we get. Our generator light is out. It's forever up some. So the generator light is now staying out, which is a good sign. And now I'm going to turn my headlights on for more of a load. seeing an issue there so that's a good sign so let's go all back and uh, we'll take a look at the meter and we'll see what the meter says that's connected to the battery right now it's saying that we're at about 12.8 volts at an idle and it's our river up It's put now with the headlights on. It's up around 13.8, uh, 13.7. 13 uh, anywhere, anywhere between 13.5 uh, uh, and 14.5 is the window that you want to be in. You want to be slightly higher than what the battery is, so the battery is always on the positive side of taking a charge, not a discharge state. So. Uh, doing the troubleshooting on this it ended up being my voltage regulator my generator looked like it was okay um, this is my old one my old one which looks newer than the one I just installed but that doesn't mean anything when it comes to electrical components and uh, what I'm going to do is write no good on this and I will reinstall it in the bus out back just so all my wires and everything are still connected and if I need to run that bus I still can so I hope this helps somebody out with uh, air cool VWs. Again, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing, and uh, take care.